I've been an animal control officer since December 3rd of 2020. My hire date is April 11th, so I've been here just a very short time. I'm married. Um, it'll be two years, September 10th. Got two dogs. Um, got a side business selling flies and guided fishing trips. My favorite thing when I'm off work is to fish. I have a wonderful, beautiful son and an even more beautiful grandson. He's two years old. I'm engaged to be married next year uh, when I'm not working. I love to arrowhead hunt. That's my passion to get out on the creek and just relax and hear nature and find ancient relics. It's a lot of fun. I think the citizens of Ada are doing a pretty good job right now of keeping their dogs and their animals taken, put up. I understand that animals get out. And my goal at the end of the day is I don't want to see that animal ran over. I don't want to see that animal stolen. I want to get them reunited. And that's kind of my goal at the end of the day. We have different approaches to the same end result, and it works. The numbers, since I've hired on, again, have gone down. So something we're doing is working, and I thank the public for that. Especially this time of year with school starting, uh, it's more important than ever to uh, keep your dogs put up, kept up. We want to keep everybody safe. That's, that's our main goal. If a dog owner wants to take their dog out, it needs to be on a leash, period, end of story. People who have dogs at home that don't have enclosures, pens, fences, um, they can go on a cable tie down, a rope. We don't, we don't like ropes because they do break. The best thing to do if you see a dog loose, even if you pick the dog up, is call us. Uh, don't try to take it upon yourself to find the owners because even at that, it, it could turn, you know, it could turn sideways and turn into something that a police officer's got to come involve their self with. I've seen it multiple times, especially dogs, larger dogs. They're a completely different animal than when you're there. Just, just because your dog is super friendly when you're around doesn't mean that it's going to be that way when you're not around because they get pretty protective. We have all sorts of avenues to locate owners. Shoot, we might even know who the owner of the dog is just by looking at the dog. One of the funny things we have are frequent offenders and they get trained. They'll, they'll, you'll roll up on the dog and you'll get out of the truck and you'll go, Bobby, what are you doing? And he'll come right to you, you put down the tailgate, he'll jump in the, in the truck. When I see a dog running down the street, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to catch up to him and make friends, entice him with some treats. Um, a lot of times they won't come. You just kind of have to hoof it. Sometimes you can drive, uh, kind of let the dog go on its route, and he'll typically end up home a lot of times. If, if not, a lot of times we can catch them. We'll post pictures on Facebook, take them to pause. Uh, they hold them for 72 hours, and uh, pictures all over Facebook, and we try to get them reunited with the owner. There have been times where we had to set a trap you know, to try to catch a dog, but very rarely. Unless the dog has a collar with a ID on it, and we will absolutely call the owner. We can call the vet if there's a rabies tag. Um, city ordinance shows that when you do have a dog that has been vaccinated, put the tag on, on the collar. It helps. I mean, it, it, I don't like taking dogs to Paws. Paws takes great care of them, but I'd rather get that dog right back to the owner. I'd like to stress that most people don't put that rabies tag on their collar, but if they did, it would reunite the dog with their owner so much quicker, and it would cost so much less money. It's important that they make sure they keep an eye on their dog and put a tag because a lot of times whenever you have just moved to a new home, even if it's within city limits, if you've moved to a new home, that dog's going to be trying to get out. They're going to test their limits. If your dog is a pause and you do come to claim it, there will be a set fee to get the dog out of the puppy jail. Uh, it's not much, um, and again, Paws will work with you if you're having a hard time. They're, they're really good out there. Spay and neuter is a great option uh, when you have a pet. If you're not planning on having puppies, um, get them spayed and neutered. It really helps control the population. The only animals that have to be vaccinated annually are cats and dogs. Another thing with the cats, if somebody's got a feral cat problem, in their neighborhood or a wild animal, raccoons, possums, skunks, we have live traps. We actually have four of them now. And they can call central dispatch, non-emergency numbers, 332-4466. I got a call at the Ada High School of a, of a skunk stuck in a dumpster. 
So in my mind, I'm like, okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get in this dumpster and get this skunk out? I get there and the skunk's not actually inside the dumpster, the little drain hole on the bottom of the dumpster, it had stuck its head in there and couldn't get its head out. So the only thing that's sticking out of this dumpster is this skunk's, you know, Back rear end, <laughs> the, the, the end that you don't want. <laughs> so I, uh, I ended up taking a trash bag, cutting it open and laying it over it and put my knees over it so it couldn't get out from underneath it and then took some leather gloves and wiggled its head out. And it didn't, actually it didn't spray me. It, it, when it got out, it was almost like, thank you very much. And it took off. I tried to gather it up, but I didn't want to press it too hard because I knew it would probably spray me and I don't like being sprayed by skunks. <laughs>